what's up everybody welcome back to the holy smokes barbecue channel today we are making something that's been a long time coming here on the channel one of my absolute favorite meals now many years ago my wife and i when we lived down south we took a trip to charleston south carolina and while we were there we attended a cooking class this was a long time ago and in that class we made low country gumbo now at the time i'd never even had this before but oh my gosh it's absolutely insanely amazing my wife has been making it ever since then and today we're going to make it right here on the channel but we're not just going to make this gumbo we're going to smoke this gumbo we're going to use three different proteins a ton of delicious vegetables and i just can't wait for you to see it so let's take a little trip down to charleston and let's make some gumbo All right, you can see I've got tons of ingredients here. They're wrapped up so as to, you know, not make them dry out and um, just keep, you know, stuff out of them from the outside. We'll dig into those a little bit later. Because first we're gonna smoke our first protein. And that is this delicious chorizo. These chorizo links came from Strip District Meats, Pittsburgh, Pennsylvania, the best butcher shop around anywhere. Go to stripdistrictmeats.com and you can order your own delicious cuts of meat, uh, beef, chicken, pork, and all kinds of exotic uh, cut. You can get all of that online, stripdistrictmeats.com, and they'll ship it nationwide. Now for this recipe, I'm not going to use all of this. This is kind of a bit much, but I'm going to use about a quarter pound, which is going to, I guess, equate to about three links. Now all of the sausage at Strip District Meats is made in-house. So this is homemade chorizo. So I'm going to use these three links and just stick them on the smoker at 250 degrees. All right, everything that you see today is gonna to be smoked right here on the Pit Boss Savannah Onyx Edition. It's available exclusively at Walmart and I'm loving this thing. It is a powerhouse. So let's open this up. And you'll see that first I have a uh, cast iron Dutch oven and it's gonna in there uh, warming up, heating up and starting to actually absorb some smoke flavor. So I'm gonna go ahead and just toss these three sausages right here on the Savannah. And we want to cook these through. We want to cook them all the way. And I want to actually get a little bit of a crisp, a little bit of a, a crunch to that outer casing. And so uh, I'm going to leave them on there for a little while. And then we're going to crank the temperature up. And then we're going to be ready to make some magic in this cast iron pot. All right, it's been about 30 minutes. Let's go ahead and take these sausages off. Woo, look at that. Yum. So we're going to put these on a plate and cover them in foil because we're going to use them again later. All right, so now I'm going to move this pot right here to the center where it is the hottest. I'm going to close this back up and then I'm going to crank the heat up to 325 degrees Fahrenheit to let the pot really, really get hot. And, uh, and then we're going to start adding stuff to it. It's going to be incredible. So give me just a couple minutes for this pot to come up to temperature. All right, we are up to 325 degrees Fahrenheit. Let's go ahead and open it up. All right, now into this 325 degree cast iron Dutch oven, we're gonna start with a half a stick of butter. And we're just gonna let that melt in there. Next, we're going to add one diced yellow onion and five cloves of minced garlic. And we're gonna just mix that around in there until it starts to get fragrant and those onions start to get translucent. So probably two minutes or so. All right, it's been a few minutes. These onions and that garlic, nice and fragrant. Everything is soft in there. Oh, it's already smelling great. Next, we'll add a big pinch of salt. A little bit more. Mix all that in together so that salt mixes in. Now it's time to add our first protein. And for that first protein, I'm using a quarter pound of chicken thighs. And I'm gonna let this cook until the chicken is cooked through. So probably about five minutes or so. Um, you'll notice that these thighs are diced up. So that'll make them uh, cook a little quicker. And could you use chicken breasts with this? You could. But chicken thighs, man, they're the way to go on this. The flavor in these guys is gonna be incredible. Close it back up. All right, our chicken's good to go. Let's come back in. Now we're gonna add one whole diced green bell pepper. 
and two stalks of diced celery. Mix all that together. This is coming together just so nicely. And once again, three to five minutes until these new ingredients are softened. This is like a party in a pot. It's like a bunch of friends who haven't seen each other in a long time. And now they're like, oh, what's up, pepper? Hey, celery, chicken, garlic, onion. Let's hang out in here for a while. Feels good in here. All right. Now that everything in there is softened, we're gonna go in with two tablespoons of flour and about two tablespoons of Old Bay seasoning. Now we're gonna stir this constantly. Uh, we're not gonna cover this back up right now. We're just gonna stir it until the flour isn't raw anymore. So maybe like three to five minutes. I should probably mention at this point that typically we make this uh, on the stove inside and since we're doing it in the smoker you should probably know you know like a lot of things affect the temperature uh, in the smoker so the ambient temperature outside uh, a lot of different things and so when i'm saying things like three to five minutes like don't make that you know the gospel right it's going to be whatever works for you uh, what you're really looking for is that consistency all right, it's been just a few minutes. I've been stirring constantly and that flour has cooked and now it is time to add, we're gonna add kind of a bunch of stuff right now. First, two cups of chicken stock, which in this case is gonna be half of this container. Next comes that chorizo that we smoked earlier. Oh man, that smells incredible. One can of petite diced tomatoes. Two tablespoons of sugar. I'm gonna add some shrimp, add however many you like. Some bay leaves, a bunch of fresh thyme. You don't have to worry about taking it off because the thyme is gonna fall right off the stems. I'm gonna mix this all together and let it simmer for about 20 minutes or so. Now I did crank the heat on the smoker to 400 degrees. Now if we were cooking this inside, I would probably cover it, but we're just going to close the lid and that's going to be the same thing as covering it. All right, after about 20 minutes, let's take a look. Oh my gosh, look at that. The bubbling. Oh man. Woo, look at that. All right, we are in the home stretch. Let's go ahead and take out these bay leaves. We'll take out the thyme stems. Look at that. See? All right, right here at the end, we are going to add uh, one chopped zucchini. This is kind of like a medium large zucchini. Now, if you live in the South, you could use okra, which is actually the original uh, ingredient for this. But I live in the North, it's winter time. You can't really find okra around here. So zucchini works just as well. Next, we're gonna add one cup of frozen fire roasted corn. This is delicious, but if it's in season and it's not as cold outside as it is right now, and you're in a location that has it, you can absolutely use fresh corn. We're gonna add a dash of Worcestershire sauce and a dash of your favorite hot sauce. We're adding some chalua here. And we mix all of this together. Oh my goodness. And then we're just gonna close the lid, let it sit for a couple minutes to really incorporate everything together. And then, listen, we are almost done. All right, the smoker is off and it is time to present this delicious gumbo. We're gonna start with a little bed of Carolina aromatic rice. If you've never had it, you gotta try it. Just this rice right here smells I mean, it smells like no rice I've ever smelled before. You've got to try this. But if all you've got is minute rice or just some basic rice, just use that. All right, and here we go with this insane gumbo. Woo! Look at that. Okay, now is the time. It is time to try this incredible gumbo. I cannot wait. Listen, the process of cooking this has made my entire neighborhood smell like the low country. If I didn't know any different, I would feel like I were in Charleston, South Carolina right now. 
but let's try it. Smoked Low Country Gumbo. Here we go. Grab some shrimp, make sure we get some zucchini, some of that chorizo, corn. There's so many things in here, you almost like can't get it all at the same time. But you better believe I'm gonna try. All right, here we go. It's gorgeous. It's smoking hot. Here we go. Oh my. Oh my. Oh. Holy smokes. That is so good. The shrimp. The, the, the chorizo is so tender. The chicken. Perfect. All these flavors we got working together here. Wow. Nothing else needed. No salt, no pepper. Like this, just like it is, is, I mean, it's perfect. It's perfect. That little bit of smoke flavor. Cause I've never had this with a little bit of smoke flavor, but this is proof that a little smoke makes everything better. Well, hey, I realize that there's a lot of ingredients here. If you can get these fresh ingredients, get them. If you can't use frozen, just use whatever you got, but you have to try this gumbo. It's absolutely incredible. And once you make it and try it, you'll probably be a lot like me and want it all the time. It's that good. Well, thank you once again for tuning into the Holy Smokes Barbecue channel. And if you like this video, make sure that you click that subscribe button to subscribe to the channel and click the thumbs up. Give us a like. That'll help other people find the channel and turn on the post notifications by clicking that little bell so that you're one of the first people to know as soon as we post new delicious outdoor cooking content. And while I go inside and eat the rest of this gumbo, you've got to check out these two videos that are going to show you some real southern dishes that will really demonstrate the flavors of the South. So check those out, and I'll see you next time.